Hi, I'm Ryan Carnes, and you're watching Hollywood Real with Jay Menez. What's up, brother? Good to see you. Awesome to have you, man. Thanks. Awesome to be here. What are you working on these days? Uh, well, these days, I mean, one of the one of the big things that I'm working on is uh, is the change organization with with our man Emilio. Um, other than that, uh, during during the extended lockdown, um, I've been working a lot on music. Um, spent a lot of time behind my drum kit, and and uh, there's an artist who's based on the East Coast that I work with named Vanessa Silverman. And I started out as Vanessa's drummer, and as time has gone on, our our, our working relationship has evolved a bit, and. And um, at this point, you know, we're we're kind of, um, I wouldn't say that we're, we are co-writing a song together that, that, we'll, that we'll release next year, but in general, you know, Vanessa will come up with the bones of a song. She'll send it to me. I'll give notes, little, you know, maybe some arrangement directions or ideas and some some sonic ideas. And and then we just, we just bounce it back and forth, man, electronically. And then when we get close to the end of the, of the, of the completed song, we'll, we'll hop on a, a Zoom call and and hammer out the details and and that's been that's been a, a really rewarding process and and kind of a saving grace to this time when when you know my acting work in the entertainment industry has definitely been affected. I've been fortunate to to still work some, but but not it's it's uh it's this year has been definitely a little bit different than than most other years. So a um, lot of music and, um, and then working on some some solo projects as well. Um, that relate to um, uh, uh, you know a message that's that's important to me to get out into the world, and, and I can't say much more about that right now. Um, so maybe we'll have another conversation again sometime, and, and I'll tell you all about that. And and um, then just working on some 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 solo creative projects. Got a couple of partners on a couple of other projects. So there's uh, there there are a lot of things that are in gestation right now, and that are that are in the beginning stages of. Uh, formulation and and uh, I'm really excited about those all coming together and coming to fruition in in the months and years to come. I know you got you've got a lot going on there, and you touched on a bunch of different projects. You know, just from prior conversations that we've had, uh, I see a through line that that kind of connects them. You seem to be uh, a somewhat spiritual person and very interested in humanity and uh, the things going on in the world. You told me one time about a charity that you're involved with. Mm -hmm. Is it? It's just humanity. This is about humanity. This is about humanity. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell me a little more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I, and and you're right in in that I, I do have a, an interest in humanity, and and I think I would say in general just leaving the world a better place than I found it. Uh, I think I think that's a good maxim by which to live, and and uh, I, I like to encourage other people to do the same, whether it's whether it's just, you know, impacting positively the, the the interpersonal relationships that we have with our family, our loved ones, our friends, um, or or you know, Im impacting um, the public at large in in particular ways. I think it's it's how I want to live my life, mm -hmm. and so I, I try to find ways to, to that, that resonate with me in order to 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 be able to contribute in that way. And and one of those ways is. The organization that you mentioned, this is about humanity, uh, T I A H for short. Um, I a friend introduced me to this organization. I think it was last last January. So it's been been almost a year, and they're doing they're doing some really incredible work down in Tijuana around the border with asylum seekers. And you know, look, I, I know that we're, we're not here to talk about politics today, and um, people. People have varied opinions on on every political issue there is, and and the way that I look at this is that it's I think the name of the organization really says it all. It's about humanity, and what I've found in going down there is is that I'm able to have a direct impact, boots on the ground impact. I, I I've I've gotten to meet families that are <clears throat> excuse me that are positively impacted and affected by this organization. Um, this organization, um, I mean, the trips that I've taken, we've taken clothing, shoes, blankets, you know, necessities that the people, the people really need to have in order to live. And, and um, this organization has built housing. They've built kitchen, like functional working kitchens to where 
families who are who are trying to find a i mean a better way to live a better place to live but also at times just just a safe place mm -hmm. away from from heinous violence and 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 you know violence that doesn't doesn't care about anything other than 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 exacting violence and these people have been given opportunities to to start a new life and you know while they're maybe waiting to enter the u.s legally going through a, a legal process whether they're just trying to escape where they've come from and and establish a new life down in mexico it's I've found it to be really impactful, and I've seen firsthand the impact that that the work that this organization is doing is having on people, and it's and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, how long have you, have you been involved with them? Uh, about a year. Yeah, I think my first yeah. trip down to down to the border was last January, mm -hmm. and um, it was it was for me it was life changing. It 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 uh, it really was, and and one of the other things that that I witnessed when uh, actually both times that I've been and. Unfortunately, I haven't been more because the trips had to stop due to, due to everything that was going on with travel restrictions and, and restrictions with groups of people. Um, but one of the things that I've seen both times is <clears throat> in the bus on the way to one of the locations where we drop off clothes and shoes and blankets, there's a street. And on this particular street, in the windows of the buildings, there, in some places, there'll be a, a blue curtain. In another window, there might be a pink curtain. And we were all informed by one of the women who heads this organization that those designate who's for sale. If it's a blue curtain, a boy is for sale. If it's a pink curtain, a girl is for sale. And I'll never forget the, the hush that came over the bus when, when our leader was, was sharing that information with us. It, mm -hmm. you know, it's an abomination you know, um, to know that in broad daylight, there, there are children who are, who are being sold for, for acts or maybe even potentially being sold, period. And <clears throat> when I see things like that, it, it <laughs> you know, regardless of, of political identity, affiliation, et cetera, like it's not about, at that point, it's not about sides to me. It's not about left or right, red or blue. I don't, I don't, I could not care less about any of that. It's about helping fellow humans. Mm -hmm. And, and I guess it's a good segue to, to mention another organization that I've been helping out, which is this organization called Operation Underground Rescue, um, OUR Rescue. And they are doing work all over the world to root out human trafficking and sex trafficking, to not only locate the cells, locate the victims, that, that have been trafficked for various purposes, but to, once they've located them, rescue them and, and bring them in and help, help them rehabilitate. In many cases, these, you know, there are kids that are very young who have been victims of this. And there's no way without proper psychological supervision and guidance and proper rehabilitation and, and, a, and, a, and an appropriate structure within which to rehabilitate that they would ever survive in the real world. It, it's impossible. They don't have those skills. They've been stripped of any sense of, of personal identity, any sense of personal uh, confidence or, or empowerment. They only know one world and, and one thing. And, and so um, Operation Underground Rescue is, I mean, is, as far as I can tell, is doing an extraordinary job in, in helping. And, um, in, 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 in affecting change in a, in a really positive way. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. When you say they go in there and they, they rescue them, it occurs to me that, you know, you, you're talking about a, a, a crime syndicate like that. That's, it, it's much like the drug trade. So it can't be easy to go in there and just walk in there and go, hey, I want these kids back. I mean, it seems to me like you'd have to bring a, a small army in there to actually <laughs> rescue these people. Is that the way it, it is well, you know, I don't, I don't know the intricate details of 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 how those operations go, and I and I would I would surmise that they probably they're all probably different in in certain ways, but I but I know that um, it's not easy, mm -hmm. and I know that there there's an element of you know they they have to they have to do very dangerous work, they have to affiliate with very dangerous people who want to protect what they feel is rightfully theirs, which is a human life. 
in this case. And, you know, the reality is, is that it's not theirs, mm. but they think that it is. And, and so, you know, they, they, they partner with law enforcement agencies. So there's, you know, there, there are people who are highly trained professionals who are involved in, in these sting operations. And, and then also on, on the rehabilitation end who are they're highly trained professionals who, who know how to caretake for people who have, who have lived through these experiences. Yeah, that's, that is horrific. Is human trafficking a problem that's always been there at, at this level, or are we just getting more awareness and more light to the problem? Well, that's a great question. Um, and I don't, I don't know that I'm necessarily qualified to, to answer that in, in its totality. Uh, what I would say is that um, in, in terms of how long it's been a problem, has it always been a problem? I mean, you know, slavery was a problem a long time ago. And this is another form of slavery. So I would say, you know, just looking at it in that respect that, yes, yeah, slavery has been a problem for a long time. And what I know about early civilizations, slavery was a problem then. So I guess in that respect, absolutely. Um, I think with respect to specifically human trafficking, sex trafficking, it's something that, that is a far bigger issue than, than many people realize. And I think, I think that's for a couple of reasons. I think that one, it's not something for, for whatever reason that um, our media tends to cover in a big way. Uh, two, I think there's a level of cognitive dissonance. I think that a lot of people in, in, in their minds and, and in their consciousness, they, they can't fathom the truth of what's going on to fellow humans in mm -hmm. some circles. And when I say some, I mean literally in every, in every state in our country, it's all over the world. It's, it's a massive problem with, with sprawling tentacles. And I think, people, I think people can't imagine it, and I think people don't want to imagine it. I think it's easier to, to, to in, probably in many cases, to look the other way. Because I think, <laughs> I mean, I think on a personal level, it's like, man, that's a lot, that's a lot to, to look at and to recognize and to take on and, and, to, and to feel, right? And then I think on, a, on another level and, and, and kind of a, a metaphysical level, as humans, we, it's hard to look at the things that we don't like about ourselves, right? Like the, sh the shadow parts of ourselves. It's, it's hard to look at that stuff. And I think on a collective level, it's hard for our collective human psyche to want to look at a massive collective problem like that because it's indicative of who we are, right? Like, we as humans have contributed to that. We have allowed that in the consciousness of our society, of our world. So on some level, even if it's not conscious, subconsciously, we know that we're responsible for, for co-creating this, this situation um, collectively. Mm. So I think, I think those things contribute to, to the, the, the fact that up until now, and, and it's certainly becoming a much more talked about issue, uh, rightfully so, but up until now, I think that's one of the reasons that that it hasn't been so talked about because it's hard to look at. How would you say you're able to use your audience or your level of celebrity to help this issue? I try to to communicate with with whatever audience or or following um, of, of people that 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 want to know what what I'm doing and want to know what I'm up to. I just try to communicate to them. Um, when, when I can and when I feel it's appropriate, things that, that are important to me, things that, mm. that I feel it necessary to take a stand for in my life in hopes that they'll understand why I'm doing it and maybe get excited about doing the same thing. There's another charity that you touched on, the Change Foundation. Mm -hmm. What is it about that organization that particularly calls you? Well, I think there, there's a number of things that, that call me about the change organization. Um, first of all, the, the leadership involved, you know, Emilio is, is a great guy. And, and um, I had the pleasure to meet him a, a number of months ago. And, and um, I, 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 I liked him. I felt a resonance with him and, and what he wanted to do. And, and um, you know, two, it's, there's, a, there's a heavy involvement of music related to the project. And as a musician and as, and as a music lover myself, I mean, that's certainly, 
it certainly had its appeal. And, and um, three, I think my, you know, in conversations that I've had with Emilio, my understanding and, and my interpretation of, of what he wants to do and what the change organization stands for and, and, and is endeavoring to do is, is, is to unite, period. Um, sure, there's some other things, but to me, that's the core of it. It's about unity. It's about coming together, no matter skin color, race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, gender identification. It doesn't matter. And that's, that's ultimately how I look at the world. Um, and, I, and I know that that's easy for me to say, mm -hmm. um, but that's my view on it. I, I, get, I, get, really, I get really frustrated with, with um, the, the, the constant sowing of division in both in the world and in our society by, by the media, by politicians, but you know, it, it's, man, I'm, I, it, it's frustrating to me. Mm. And I decided a long time ago that I'm just not going to do that. I have no interest in feeding division. I have interest in unifying. That's, that's what I'm about. And, and that's what I, that's what I wish more people would be about. And to me, that's what the change organization is about, is about unifying in spite of our perceived differences. I saw a, um, I don't know if I have my, I do have my phone. I'll try to not take it out and reference it, but um, I actually posted this, I think, to my, to my Instagram yesterday. I saw a meme and it's this, this picture of, it's this sort of silly picture of, of uh, two guys hugging. And it says, the moment when you realize that everybody else in the entire world is you just in a different body. And I went, yeah, that's it. That's it. And it's really hard to remember that. You know, yeah. I, I admittedly, it's hard to remember that. I, I, I had to remind myself on, on my drive here today when I got <laughs> pissed off at somebody in traffic, you know, I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta put my money where my mouth is and <laughs> stop honking at this guy. <laughs> so it's, it's hard. It's not easy, but to me, that's, that's, that's the reality that we live in. That, that's metaphysically speaking, that is the truth. We are all unified, yeah. but, we, but we forget that and we don't act like that. And we're, and we're conditioned to not act like that from the time we're very young. And to me, the change, the change organization is about that. It's about transcending our perceived differences. It's about transcending the superficial differences and focusing on giving love to and, 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 and giving equal treatment to and kindness and, and extending compassion to everyone, particularly people who, who, whose lives have been directly affected by, by, um, by terrible crimes committed in the name of division rather than in the name of unity. Your traffic example was, was a good one. <laughs> Because, uh, like you said, oftentimes we forget that. But the yeah. first step is recognizing that it's happening and being able to check yourself, mm -hmm. right? And then kind of come back to center. Because yeah. you're not going to do it 100% no, never. all the time. But, but you need to recognize that. In your view, what is, it, what is one thing that we can all do better to unify ourselves? Meditate. Um, because I think, I think when, and look again, like I'm not perfect. I, you know, I, I'm still developing my meditation practice, but in my experience in, in, in the realm of meditation, there is, there is the possibility to tap into that universal oneness, right? I think, I think we gain, we, we have the, the ability to gain access to, um, realms of higher thought, realms of higher awareness. And from that place, we can, we can really recognize and tap into and, 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 and sort of meritate in this, 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 this interconnectedness of all humans and of all things. So meditation is one thing. Um, smile at somebody walking down the street. So powerful, you know? isn't it? It is. And I, it, it makes me sad sometimes because I, I like to just, you know, walk around in the grocery store or whatever and, 
and look at people. I like to make eye contact, and 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 it bums me out sometimes when people um, seem afraid to connect in that way. They they seem afraid to 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 be vulnerable enough to look another human in the that they don't know, to look him in the eye and and maybe even offer a smile. Um, so I think I think that too connect with other people, and because I think. Uh, Amelia and I were talking about this the other day. F- fear functions on ignorance. Fear and judgment thrive in environments where there's a lack of understanding and a lack of exposure. And I think if more apparently disparate groups of people who, who, who think they don't like each other for one reason or another, I think if they were exposed to one another and got to know each other mm-hmm. and got to recognize the humanity in one another... I think we'd have a lot fewer problems. So it's a communication issue. I think it is. I think it's a communication issue. And also, man, you know, I know it's scary sometimes, particularly in, in cities where there's a wide variety of people, right? There's a wide swath of, of people living in a city. But do nice things for strangers. Make somebody's day better. I'm a firm believer in, in, in small gestures, like holding a door open for someone or letting someone in traffic. I'm a firm believer in that because you don't know what that person's going through. That person might be going home to beat on their wife or beat on their husband or kick their dog, but because you extended a a, a benevolent gesture to them, it might change their day and they might not go home and be abusive to someone or, or an animal. They might, it might have a ripple effect. They might do the same thing for the next person and that might change that person's day. So I think that's another way. Um, random acts of kindness. Random acts of kindness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just said it in four words, what took me 400 words to say. <laughs> but yes, that. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. And, and I, and I, I want to say something else about the, the change organization. Another thing, I mean, there's a, there's, there are many things that drew me to it. And it's, I think it's hard for me to distill it all down, you know, and into a soundbite. But w- one of the other things that I want to say is that w- when I heard that one of the main functions and primary goals of, of this organization was to offer life mentorships to kids, mm. that, that really resonated for me. I think there are, you know, look, nobody's, nobody's parents are perfect. Nobody's teachers are perfect. Nobody's Nobody's authority figures are perfect in their lives when, when, when they're growing up. But, I, I, you know, the, the reality is, is that children are literally our future. And I know that, that, that sort of that sentiment gets, gets tossed around a lot, but it's, it's literally true. And, you know, the future leaders, the future, the, <laughs> the future, the future politicians, they're kids right now. And the, the future inventors, the future artists, the future teachers, the future, they're, they're literally all kids. And so I recognize that because, you know, for, I mean, this is a whole other philo- sort of philosophical, sociological conversation, but what I've witnessed in my life is that there are a lot of kids that don't have good role models. They don't have good structures in their lives to help them thrive. They don't, they don't have good leadership at home or at school. They don't have, they don't have mentors who, who, who champion them, who encourage them. What they do have is a lot of people around them bullying them, making fun of them, alienating them, telling them that they can't be whatever they want to be for whatever reason. And I think mentorship for children, um, regardless of where, where, where they come from or, or the circumstances, is, is crucial. I think it's really important. And so that's one of the, you know, I'm, I'm, I told Emilio and Jennifer, I said, I'm, 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 I'm in, you know, if, if I can, if I, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. And I always feel like if, if I can help somebody else not make the same mistakes, or if I can help inspire somebody else or, or, or shed some light on their life, on their lives, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it. And, and um, you know, I think it's important to, 
to, to give to kids and, and to inspire them. A lot of people told me I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I had teachers that would like, you know, kind of crap on my dreams and, <laughs> you know, b bullies and people who are, who are jealous of other people's dreams and aspirations. You know, it's, it's hard to be a kid. It's really hard. Right. And so I think any, 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 any leg up that we can give kids, especially kids who have, who've had their worlds completely ripped away from them and, and, and rocked by, by a hate crime against a family member. I mean, man, those, those kids really need it. I'm glad you brought up mentorship and, and role models. That is a very important element. How do you see the role of social media in as a virtual mentor to these kids? I think social media is like anything in life. It can be used for good and it can be used for bad. And, and uh, I, I, I guess my wish would be that more people would use it for good and to inspire and to, and to elevate and to exchange ideas. And, and, and there's a lot of that, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, and, you know, I'm glad that there is. And then there's just a lot of self-obsessed narcissism. <laughs> and and uh, I w it's tough because, because, you know, in many cases, social media is sort of the new business card. And there's an expectation for, for people in particular industries or, or vocations to, 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 to use social media as their calling card. Mm -hmm. So I understand that element of it too. And at the same time, I think it's a double-edged sword that I think needs to be wielded, wielded very dexterously. And uh, <laughs> I think, I think there, there, there are infinite possibilities when it comes to um, positive ways that social media can be used as a, as a tool of influence or mentorship. And then, of course, you know, there are an equal number of ways that, that it can be used to, <laughs> to sort of like... Uh, decay the social fabric of our society <laughs> <laughs> for, for lack of a better way of putting it. Yeah. You know, to the subject of change, we all change. We all evolved or should, mm -hmm. if we want to keep growing, you know, maybe, maybe you've got somebody, a, a social media influencer who is known for, you know, pranks and antics and more silly stuff mm -hmm. as they grow, as they evolve and move their content into more positive messages. And I know your your view on this is I don't want to tell people what to do. I wouldn't want to do that either. I'm just saying it would be my hope mm -hmm. that as as people grow, they would recognize this need um, to put a positive influence on on today's youth. I agree. That would be my <laughs> hope also. Yeah, and 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 I like I like the you know the the approach that you took in 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 sharing that just now. And I, and I, I agree, you know, none of us are perfect and we all make mistakes. And I think social media has, has unfortunately, um, in, in certain, you know, fortunately and unfortunately in certain ways, I think put everyone's lives under a microscope and that's good in certain ways. And in certain ways, you know, I, I think we've become, it's funny, I, I've, I've, I've been having a conversation about forgiveness lately, just sort of an ongoing with friends, with, um, you know, with people around me. And, and I think it's the microscope under which everyone is now makes it, it seems that it's made it harder for us to forgive people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's unfortunate because no one is perfect. And I think that the, the measure of a, of, a, of a human is their, is their willingness to grow in awareness and, and grow in, 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 in maturity and evolution. And, and I think everybody deserves that. Everybody deserves the chance to, to make amends or to, or to grow and learn. Because that's what life is all about, really, is, is growth and evolution and, and getting better, gaining awareness. And I, and I look at our society, we, we were talking about this, you know, uh, our country seems to be going through uh, a lot of growing pains right now, and and we're we're making mistakes, and then we're we're trying to correct those mistakes, and 
there's a lot of upset about certain mistakes and and it's 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 pretty intense um but i but i do think that i'm hopeful because you know children eventually learn they fall down repeatedly until they don't anymore until they learn to walk and i think the same can be said for for cultures and we've fallen down repeatedly and hopefully we're learning to walk now um you know, we'll see. I think the unfortunate thing that, that happens and has happened throughout history is when history indeed repeats itself. So to bring it back to the social media conversation, look, man, you know, life, life is not easy. Um, if, if, if one takes life to heart and one has the intention to grow and, and evolve and mature, there's some hard lessons there's we it's impossible to come out unscathed and I, I i guess i would just say that my hope would be that that people maybe like people that, that you were referencing who who um you know have maybe not necessarily used used their influence for for good um you know maybe maybe those people have an opportunity to to learn from that and and to grow and and to then become um, s- sort of stewards of of our youth. In a way. Another example of role modeling, I think. Yeah. You yeah. seem to understand manifestation better than most people. How can Maybe. we manifest this positive change in the world? I. I <laughs> A, that's a great question. That's and that's a big question. Wow, where I, I don't, man, I, I got to think about that for a second. I, I, I think certainly I'll, I'll, some elements are involved are intention, vision. You know, but vision and intention have to be followed by action. Um, and I think there's there's in that there's got to be an allowance for for everyone's humanity. There's got to be. And, and I don't, and I, and I, when I say an allowance for, I'm not, I'm not advocating for a lack of responsibility or accountability. Mm-hmm. Th- those are different things. An allowance for just meaning that, that we're all trying to figure this out at the same time. We're, you know, we're each individually trying to figure our individual selves out. We're trying to figure out our families are trying and, and, you know, and, and, and on and on and on. We're, we're trying to figure out those concentric circles of, of relationship throughout our lives. And I, 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 I guess I would say that, that, that qualitatively that kind of change that you're talking about starts with the self, because if we don't possess or if we don't learn to cultivate the ability to be more kind, more patient, more compassionate, more empathetic, more loving, more accepting of ourselves makes it a lot harder to do it for other people. Mm. And to me, that's really what we're talking about here. The, the kind of change that, that we're talking about is it, it has to be driven by, sure, sure, there's the, there's the elements of policy and, and governance, but I, I always, I'm a firm believer that the outer is only a manifestation of the inner. So what our politics look like, what our governance looks like, what, what, what our systems look like are, are, a reflection, are a collective reflection of what we as a people look like on the inside. And so I think it, it, starts, it starts here. It starts within and, and those those qualities are necessary. The qualities of love, compassion, kindness, empathy, understanding. We, we, we've, got, we've got to start giving ourselves more of that so we can give other people more of that. One of the things really that's, that stands out about you that, that I really admire is uh, maybe because in this way we are alike and think, think the same, is, is that when it comes to the problems or the issues in this world, you had said you you are for unity, yeah. Not I'm not ag- against right. something, right? I think it was Mother Teresa. I think um, has a quote, something. I'm I'm going to butcher it, but something along the <laughs> lines of, "Oh man, I'm really going to butcher it." But but it's basically she's saying, 
I'm not going to go to an anti-war protest, but I'll go to a pro-peace rally. And I think it's so powerful because it's it's really easy to get caught up caught up in 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 putting our energy, focus, and attention on being against something, mm-hmm. as opposed to being for something, being for the solution to that problem. Right. And I, man, I, 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 I you know, I didn't. That was that was something. So I, I went to um, a master's program in spiritual psychology between 2009 and 2011. And that was something that I had never been exposed to that, to that idea before until that program. That was something that was talked about a lot is, is the, the difference between in, in, in the languaging of and therefore, because language is powerful, words are powerful. So the difference in the languaging of being against something versus being for something and it's a completely different paradigm and it's a, mm-hmm. and it's a reframe. And I, I wish that that was something that was more talked about in the zeitgeist of, of, of culture, because I think it's really important. We're talking about it now. We're talking about it now. Yeah. So we'll put it out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully this gets 10 million views. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Amen. No, I, I totally agree. And, and I, I had heard that Mother Teresa quote before. Mm-hmm. And I don't know exactly how it goes, but you know, like you, I'm not interested in in attending a rally against something. Mm-hmm. I'm, but I am for change, for example. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah, my 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 te- one of my teachers in that program would make the example of, and it's funny. It was funny to hear him say it. He would say, "I don't go to a restaurant and look at the menu and go, ugh, I hate chicken parmesan. Why is that on the menu? Ugh." I hate tuna tartare. Ah, he was. I don't. I don't go down the list of the menu and say all the things that I hate and I'm against and get mad because they're on the menu. No, I look for the thing that I like and I order that. And I and I that I put my attention on what I want. Yeah. And order that, and I'm grateful that it's there. Right. And I think you know that's that's a that's a bit of a of an overly simplified view of it, but it's 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 a it's a funny sort of lighthearted take on it. Yeah. Uh, well, it makes the point. Yeah. Well, on a, on a lighter note, let's talk about film and TV and music. Uh, a lot of people don't, they know you as an actor, but not as a musician. What is it about music that has kept drawing you back to it? It's my first love. Um, music, and I, and I don't know why. It, I don't know why it's my first love. I mean, you know, I could analyze that, but but the fact is, is that it's the first thing I think that that I was drawn to as a child that that really animated me and 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 made me feel alive and, and excited and inspired and um, it, it it's you know when I was five years old or something I was we I grew up in the country on a farm and back then th- there wasn't satellite TV <laughs> at least where I where I live you know we we had four stations and an antenna on the roof and so I I didn't know. But my, you know, my parents listened to music. My my dad was into like gospel type stuff, and my mom was into oldies and Roy Orbison. And I'm actually a huge Roy Orbison fan because of my mom. But we didn't have MTV or anything, so my I, I, the the music that I was exposed to was just via my parents. I, I think. Well, then, at a certain age, when when my grandparents started looking after me, sometimes they they lived in town and they had MTV. And I would just, I would just veg out in front of MTV for hours, hours. I was, I was completely entranced by the music and the music videos, and I don't, you know, it, it, it just, it, it became a really prominent part of my life. And then when I got a little older and got into sports and academics, I, I still played music. I was in jazz band, marching band, pep band, and junior high and high school, and. I was in marching band when I in pep band when I was brief, when my brief stint in college. So it's always been there, but but at a certain point, it sort of took a it sort of took a little bit of a back seat and became more a hobby. And then, you know, I got into some acting classes at, at school and did a play and 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 I think the difference for me between music and acting was that. And I went to a scouting event, met some people who who 
um, took an interest in, in me as an actor. So when I moved to LA, I, I, I had sort of a, uh, I had a foundation, I had a, I had a soft landing. I didn't just come here, you know, trying to figure everything out on my own. And so I think that's why I was drawn to acting uh, professionally. It's because I had some people who believed in me enough, even though, even though they said, remember, my first manager said to me, he goes, well, you're not very good, <laughs> but I think you can be taught. And, uh, and I wasn't. He was right. Um, but, you know, I got in class and worked and, and worked at it. Um, but I, but I, the point being is that I had, a, I had some people who believed in me and, and who gave me a, a structure to step into when I moved to LA and, and, helped, and helped me get started. I didn't have that in music. And quite frankly, growing up, I didn't, I didn't know that music or acting was, was even within the realm of possibility as something that I could do as a profession. To me, it seemed like a, a, just a completely different world that, that wasn't for somebody like me. And music, or, or, and, and I guess, I guess I'll, I'll back up and, and say that, that you know, the people that I had in my corner when I first moved out here helped me realize that it was a possibility. And music remained sort of in the background as a hobby. And then there was a period of time when I don't know that I touched a set of I don't know, I touched a drum kit for, for 10 years. I had drums out here in, in LA with me, just they were in storage or I just, I kind of forgot about it. And then maybe six years ago, something like that, I realized one day that, that there was something missing in my life and that that thing was music because it, it really, it's, it's soul food for me. And I think it's, I think it's fortunately it's been able to be that because I've never had to rely on it for income as a profession. There's never been that, that external pressure to succeed. So it's just, it's, it's been able to be fun for me. But when I had that realization, I, I sort of made a deal with myself. Well, it wasn't really a deal. It was more of, I guess it was more of a, a demand. <laughs> and, and that was, I'm going to go seek out other musicians to collaborate with. I, I need to play music again. I need, I need it in my life. And so I was at a, a friend's party one, one night for, I don't know what it was for, but I ended up meeting this, this, um, this female vocalist who was, who fronted a rock band. And she said, Oh, come jam with us sometime. So I went and jammed with them. And lo and behold, a couple months later, their drummer, drummer and bassist who were brothers, I think, left LA, went back to Colorado, left the band, they needed a drummer. So I stepped in and, and started playing gigs around LA with them. And, and then uh, the lead singer and the guitarist were in a relationship that, that terminated. So there went the band. Yeah. And um, from there, I just, you know, I think we were talking earlier about, about intention. And intention is very powerful. You know, it's got to be followed up with action. But but my intention to do that was, was strong enough that things just started sort of attracting in coming into my, to my realm. And, and, um, you know, there were a couple of other projects in there that I've played with, um, one a band, you know, we cut a three track demo and then the bassist left right after that. And, <laughs> and then, you know, and then the, the singer, he, he, he was a single dad and, so there went that band, and and um, then there's another project that that I played with that I think I'll play with again at some point. It's just it's just you know our our the singer took some time away to to build a business um, that has nothing to do with music. Um, but recently, I've been uh, I met this 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 woman named Vanessa Silverman um, at a through a mutual friend at a Christmas party, and we just got to talking. And um, Vanessa was just one of the most humble, grounded, kind people I had ever met in LA. And, and, um, we, we stayed in touch and then she called me one January, I think it was three or four years ago. And she called me and said, Hey, um, Ryan, I'm, I, you know, I'm coming through LA on, on my tour and, um, I don't have a drummer to play my LA show. It's just going to be me and drums, you know, no basses, just, you know, like garage rock style. Um, can you, can you learn a couple songs and come sit in? One of the guys from one of the other bands playing that night's gonna, he's gonna play the other four songs. 
So I said, yeah. So, you know, send me the songs. So I learned them and we played and, and um, I had a blast and Vanessa and I got along really well. And, and um, then I think, I, so anytime she'd play in LA, I'd start going to her shows because she's, she's an incredibly charismatic, captivating performer. And I liked her music. And, and so I, I, became, I became a little bit of a, of a groupie. So I, I just, I'd show up at all the shows just thinking like, man, I'd really like to play drums for Vanessa because I just love her vibe and love who she is as a person. And, and every time, you know, I'd show up at the show, she was super grateful and she always had a drummer. And I was always like, man, maybe I should just Nancy Kerrigan, the drummer. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but, but eventually one day Vanessa called me and she said, Hey, listen, um, you know, I need a drummer. My, my other two drummers that I've been playing with, you know, they're, they're, they're not around anymore for whatever reason. And, and uh, I'd love if you'd step in. Well, my bassist and I are coming off tour. We've got a show. It's our next to last show in LA. And um, we're not going to have any time to rehearse. So can you learn the whole set, you know, by whatever? I don't know. I don't know how many days away it was. And I said, yeah, send me the music. So I went and I learned the set. We played the show and, and, um, Vanessa and and Carissa, her bassist, were were really stoked about how the about how the show went and and how it turned out and the audience the audience response was was great and so after the show she was like, "You're my drummer. I don't care what you say. You're my drummer." <laughs> and um, so that was about a year ago, I think. And and Vanessa and I played maybe a year and a half. And Vanessa and I had played played a handful of shows in New York and. We were supposed to play more this spring. We were supposed to play a few in Southern California this spring, and those got canceled. Um, but the 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 good the upside is is that during this weird time, we we've been working remotely, and um, you know bouncing songs back and forth, and and our our I, I think I was mentioning to you earlier our 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 working relationship has evolved, and and we're co-writing a song currently that we'll release at some point next year. Um, I've, I've started doing background vocals on, on most of Vanessa's stuff and helping out with arrangements and consulting here and there. And it's great, man. We're, we're having a blast and, and, and Vanessa's sound has, has evolved and taken on a different direction that we're both really happy about and, and inspired by. And, um, yeah, we're, we're going to keep doing it. Yeah. Sounds like a dream come true for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was a groupie and then I was the drummer. Yeah, there you go. Sounds like <laughs> rock star. One of those movies, right? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's amazing. And so where can we find her music? Um, you can find her music on uh, Apple Music, Spotify, um, YouTube. There's probably some other places, but right, those we'll are the, link those it are the all main up. places. Yeah, yeah. We'll link like, it all up in the show notes. Cool, cool. Figure out where it is. Awesome. Find Ryan and Vanessa jamming out. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Very good. You've done a lot of TV and moving more into films now. Mm. Any any new projects there you can talk about? Yeah, one. Uh, so so uh, in July, I was despite you know the the circumstances, I I was fortunate enough to get to go shoot a movie in in Virginia, little little indie Christmas rom com. Um, Sadly, we we had to shoot it so late this year that it that it didn't end up being um, appropriate for for this year's Christmas market, um, but but hopefully next year. So the movie's not out yet, but it's called A Cupid for Christmas, and um, it's we had a lot of fun doing it. And it's it's a really well written script by by this um, gentleman named Blaine Weaver. Blaine directed the movie as well, and Blaine wrote the newest American Pie. Which has done really well on Netflix. American Pie, I think it's American Pie Girls Rules. Mm. Blaine wrote that as well. Um, so he's, you know, I he's he's doing really well, and I got to work with a really talented writer director and had fun out there in Virginia shooting it, which I know is your your old stomping grounds. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll find a home uh, for next Christmas, Christmas twenty twenty one. Yeah. Well, that's going to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. We're we're excited about it. And and um, aside from that, um, I'm just you know working 
we're working, doing some writing, doing some development, uh, both both solo and with some partners um, here and there on on various projects that that, that I'm really really excited about, and um, you know we're we're making progress, and and hopefully I'll be able to say more about those soon. Very good. Let's do a little virtual mentorship. Okay. For actors coming up. <laughs> I know you, you said you kind of came into it and you had a little bit of help. Uh, what's your best advice for um, actors trying to level up in their game or even ones just just trying to break in and, and, uh, and make it in this town? That's a big conversation. And, and um, I, I, one of the things that I've learned is that everybody's, everybody's path and journey are different. And no, you know, no two careers are ever going to look alike, as much as we might want them to. Um, I think you know, there's a few basic things uh, that are that are really important. Um, go to class. <laughs> Get in class. Um, I've never, I've never, you know, it's it's funny to me. I've a handful of times in recent years, uh, fellow actors have said to me when I've brought up, oh, I, oh, I. I got acting class tomorrow at whenever I can't, sorry, I can't make it. They're like, Oh, Oh, you're in, you're in class. Wow. Good for you. And I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't I be in class? I've, to me, I've never understood now. Sure. At a certain point, there've been, there've been moments in my career when I, I've been too busy to go to class or, you know, I've been out of town on a project and I can't go to class. So yeah, sure. Uh, but my thing is like, you know, until you're Brad Pitt, go to class. And Brad Pitt probably still goes to class. I don't know. Um, but, but you know what I mean? I, I just think it's maybe Daniel Day-Lewis goes, still goes to class. I, I just think, especially for young actors starting out, go to class. Find a good class. There's a, there's, there's a lot of classes. Some of them are not as great as others. But find a good teacher. You know, get some references and just get your butt in class. Mm. There's, you know, you, you got to do it. 10,000 hours, right? To, right. to become uh, a master. So go to class. Um, well, they say that great athletes, even at the highest level, continue to work on the basics, even after, I mean, that's how they're so good. I, I, there you go. I, I, so, I, think it's, I think it's really important. Hmm. Um, and, you know, look, hey, you know, there's, there's probably a lot of actors out there that, that don't still go to class and they're working and they're doing great. So no shade. I'm not throwing shade at them. That work, whatever you know, if that's working for them, great. I, yeah. I, I'm not one of those guys. I feel like I, I feel like I have to work. Yeah. I have to work hard, and 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 to me, it's important to stay in class. That would be my advice. Sure. To, if to if you're actor. not where you want to be, then go to class. That's one of the ways to kind of you've got to stay active, working at your craft, and and improving. Absolutely. Yeah. So that. Um, get get good headshots i mean at this moment in time there's no excuse for a bad headshot because apple like iphones on portrait mode can take great headshots <laughs> so <laughs> you know get some good headshots find a good photographer to shoot with or a friend who's really good with a with a, with a camera um yeah that's one thing um maintain relationships the caveat is don't be false be authentic. Be invested in in those relationships and in the people that you meet. Um, you know the the thing the thing about being an actor is that other people in the industry smell a desperate needy actor a mile away. So eventually, if you're just using people, you're going to get found out. You, you're gonna you're gonna the the jig will be up. So I say, it's very important. To make relationships and maintain them, because this business, a lot, a lot of this business is, is it's you know, it's it's like any business. It's based on who you know. It's based. It's built upon relationships. Mm -hmm. The relationships that you as an actor have with your reps, or the that you have with directors, producers, writers. The, the relationships that your reps have with all of those people. It's all built on relationships. So, so be a good person build authentic relationships and maintain those relationships. Um, and that's, that's a, you know, that's a lesson that, um, 
nobody taught me that I that I had to learn eventually because you know I have no background in business. I and and you know I eventually I was like, oh, I it's 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 really important to maintain relationships. Mm. Um, people sense and respect authenticity, and I think it's it's like. I'm a firm believer in never approaching a situation from what can you do for me? It's, I think it's, it's about how can we both benefit? How can we make sure that everybody at the table thinks they're getting the best deal? How can we, how can we co-create something together? Not what can you do for me? Like if anything, what can I do for you? How can I serve you? Mm. And, and then if at some point it makes sense, for us to work together, then then we have a then we have a, a, a solid foundation rooted in in service and generosity or mutual benefit, rather than a, a relationship built on a house of cards. That's that's all about me, me, me. Yeah. So, what would you say is that most important attitude or mental habit that you need to succeed as an actor? I think it's a growth mindset. Um. I think it's, I think it's, um, you know, my, my, a really good friend of mine, um, who's been wildly successful in, in his business. Um, my, my, my friend, Charlie, and if he sees this, so he, you know, um, he, he'll, he'll feel the love. Um, he's, he, he recommended a book to me recently called, the book is called Mindset. Carol Dweck. Yeah. And it talks about fixed mindset versus growth mindset. I think I'm saying that's yes, the two. That's yeah. correct. Yes. And um, I started listening to it and I was like, oh man, I can, I can see ways that I have a fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. I, I better, I better start looking at that with a, with a microscope and, and, and um, remedy those places where I do have a fixed mindset. But I think it's, it's really important because in this industry, it's all about collaboration. When you're on set with a director who's giving you notes, you better be able to hear him and take the notes, um, or you know you risk getting fired or not getting hired the next time. It's like so to to have the malleability and the and the and the and the flexibility to know that I don't know everything. I'm always going to be learning. It's always going to be a process, and I better have a growth mindset. So I can see where I can improve because, because if I don't, I'm dead. Yeah. Excellent book. I'm, I've, I've only just started it. Oh, so, you have? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't finished yet. All right. So I'm, I'm hoping that, that she's going to get into how I change or transform the ways in which I have a fixed mindset into a growth mindset. Yes. Okay. You'll, you'll okay. love it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, Ryan. Um, this has we been got great. A, we got a lot in common. Yeah, I I look forward to doing this again. Yeah, me too. All thanks, right. Jay. Well, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, thanks for your time. <laughs>